The message you're about to listen to is brought to you by the Enthronement House Christian Center, a church with the mandate to activate and actualize God's royalty in you. Fasten your seatbelt, get ready for a ride as God's servant brings you the anointed word of God that will change your life forever. And now, the ministry of the senior pastor, Enthronement Assembly, Reverend Deji Olabode. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Let us pray. Father, bless your word tonight. Help me not to keep back what is profitable for your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm asking Heavenly Father that you would let your face be seen in this word. Let your light shine in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm asking, oh God, that the spirit of all trans will be given to me and trans will be given to your people. And understanding will dawn on your people like never before in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So, Mark 9, 23, we've been talking for a while, since the beginning of this month, that if you can believe, all things are possible to the one who believes. In other words, there is no question to what God can make possible in the life of a believer. The question, like I shared earlier this month, is a question of faith. What can you believe God for? Not what can God do. Our God can do all things. Nothing is too hard for him. The question, therefore, is not on the side of God's possibilities or his capability to do those things. The question should be on the side of our faith. This means every believer must take responsibility for the development of their own faith because it is to you according to your faith. The just in four portions of the Bible, Habakkuk 2 and three other portions of the Bible, the just shall live by his own faith. The just shall live by his own faith. It means, therefore, that the same way you live by breathing, the just lives by faith. We must be the kind of people who understand faith, who grow in our faith, who pay attention to the development of our faith. My faith is not a substitute for your faith. My faith can only carry you so far. It's important for us to all begin to develop our faith. And Romans 10 uh, verse 17, the Bible tells us, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the raw material for the manufacturing of faith is the word of God. It means therefore that once you begin to limit your interaction with the word of God, you have limited the dimension of faith that you can operate in. We must begin to pay more attention to the Word of God, the written Word of God, the spoken Word of God, the preached Word of God, if we're going to develop faith to do the impossible in our lives. Hallelujah. And so, I want to share, so I was praying about this this morning, and, uh, you know, I, I just received a word of God from, God from God for you, and about... You know, the Lord just basically told me to tell you he cannot confirm nothing. <laughs> God cannot confirm nothing. God cannot confirm nothing. There, look, faith is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not seen. You see, a lot of people are basing their faith or nothing faith has substance faith has substance while listening to pastor toba last week he really blessed us um, when he expanded on the works of the law um, and, 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 and the works of the flesh and the works of faith that's where i want to take off today that faith has its own works faith has its own works there are a lot of people just all they are doing is expecting Okay, let us assume that expectation is hope. Where is the substance for what you're expecting? Where is the substance for what you're... You need to find substance and evidence for what you're expecting. I'm not going to ask anybody not to expect what they're expecting, but your expectation. He said, when you have found it, give them that scripture, please. When you have found it, there shall be a reward. 
and your expectation shall not be cut short. So expectations just don't come to pass. Your expectations must have evidence. Your expectation must have substance. And so God said to me earlier, I said, Dad, I'm just not going to confirm nothing. There are a lot of people now who are doing nothing and expecting everything. They are the most dangerous people <laughs> to have in your space. People who do nothing and expect everything. They do nothing and they expect everything. They are embalmed with a sense of entitlement. They are the ones who believe that life owes them. They believe that leaders owe them. They believe that institutions owe them. But what they are expecting from life, expecting from leaders, expecting from, from people, expecting from the institution is not based on any practical... Are you getting what I'm saying? And you have to have said this over, 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 over the years. There must be some evidence. There must be some substance to your expectations. There must be some evidence or there must be some substance to your... Listen to me. Substanceless expectations will get you nowhere. Substanceless expectations will get you nowhere. And substanceless confessions too will get you nowhere. What is your expectation? So we're not saying you shouldn't have hope. We're not saying you should have positive expectation. But what is it based upon? Do you, can you give us substance for it? And can you give us evidence for it? This basically is a problem. We just expect. We just expect. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, in James 2, verse 14, I'm going to begin from there. James began to talk about, and I, and I like the, the Bible because sincerely, uh, this book, James, balanced a lot of what Paul had taught. Because if you went with Paul alone, you can just get there believing that. I mean, there's this brand of grace that I'm hearing now that people are just shouting, grace, 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 grace. He's done, he's done, he's done. Is it just like that? He's done. I mean, there's nothing to do. Are you serious? <laughs> it's a fake grace, a fake brand of grace. What does it profit? So Paul, James was saying here, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Are you there? If someone says he has faith, faith but does not have works can faith save him let me just give you here faith works faith i'm not just saying that faith works as a principle i'm saying that faith works if you are in faith you must walk <laughs> If you can't show me the walk that your faith is based upon, you're just joking. Faith works as a principle, but faith also works. Nothing goes for nothing. So he says here, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute, of daily food and one of you says to him confession depart in peace be warmed be filled but you do not give the things which are needed for the body what does it profit what he's saying here is your confessions must be backed up with your actions your confessions must be backed up with certain actions, certain works. <laughs> you get to a point where words don't work for you anymore. I love you, I love you too. But show it. The love must have proofs. So he says, if you now do not practically give him the things that are needed, are you there? And you're saying, depart. Be warm, be filled, but you don't give him the things which are needed for his body, or does it profit? Does also faith by itself, does also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Hence my title tonight, How to Bring Faith to Life. How to Bring Faith to Life. You see, when he says, faith without works is dead, he's saying it takes work to bring 
faith to life. Many years ago, when I got married about almost 15 years ago, I was so excited about the woman in my life that, you know, we had our honeymoon in those days, we were broke, so we had a honeymoon in our house. Then I stopped praying, I stopped doing anything. I just was enjoying the woman. <laughs> I was just having fun, no work, no prayer, nothing, you know, just, yes, we have arrived now, we are now married. I just relaxed. Something done on me. By three weeks of honeymooning, poverty came in like an armed man. <laughs> I'm getting, getting very, very sarcastic right now. <laughs> My wife says, I'm a very sarcastic guy. I mean, all of a sudden, everything dried up. I was thinking, man, God is going to pay me for, <laughs> you know, being on honeymoon with my wife. Then it dawned on me, man. Once you stop working, it stops working. Once you stop working, it stops working. Think about all the principles of the word of God you learn. Think about giving. Think about sacrifice. Think about praise and worship. Think about confession. Think about all the things you can think about. Once you stop, once you stop doing it, it stops. Once you stop working, things stop working. Once you stop doing, things stop happening. No, and let me explain it. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Once you stop, it's like saying, no matter how long you've driven your car, once you stop powering the car, the car will stop. Once you stop, it will stop. Once you stop, things will stop. Once you stop working, things will stop working. I learned a very hard lesson that day. That sincerely, you can't use one principle in the word of God to cancel any other principle. Are you there? There's a place of loving your wife, but there's a place of working. The only people who can sit down perpetually loving are Yahoo boys, you know, thieves who scam people. If you work for resources, you know there's a time to work, there's a time to play. There's a time. Are you there? There's time for romance, there's time for work. If you're gonna have all these irresponsible relationships where it's all true romance you will suffer once you stop working it stops working once you stop working here we are as a church once we stop praying it will stop working once we stop giving it will stop working no matter the principle you're putting to work once you stop working it just stops working are you getting what i'm saying so it says faith therefore if it has not works is dead so to bring your faith to life you must walk you must you must be on the work treadmill. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must be working. You must be working. You must be working. And not all talk is work. Are you there? God? Some just we fill up their whole day with talk. <laughs> Any talk that's not contributing to your work is a waste of time. Any talk that's not contributing to your work is a waste of time. Nobody, I don't have time for rubbish. So once you stop working it stops working but someone will say you have faith and i have works james now says show me your faith without your works and i will show you my faith with my work so he's saying how you work is an expression of your faith when i see how you work is an expression when i see your work hours when i see your work schedule when i see your attitude to work it's an expression of your faith. Even if you're going to be a sophisticated comedian, you will be a hardworking comedian. You don't become a Bill Cosby by... Are you getting what I'm saying here? You may find out that the time they are joking is even the fraction. They are, the other time they are creating jokes, they are studying jokes, they are looking at this, they are studying culture. That is even something as funny as comedy. No, see, there's no successful comedian every successful comedian is a hard worker even if their work is during the midweek or whatever is it is the weekend they will be working on their production let me move up time show me therefore your works your fruit without your works and i'll show you my fruit by my works it means when i see how you work i can tell how your faith how you work is an expression of your faith how you work is an expression <laughs> 
They're really expecting God to pay them for time spent on watching movies. It's not going to happen like that. You will be as broke when you started watching the movie. As I'm not saying you watch movie, you, but except you are deriving economic value from movies, limit the time spent on it. Except you are derived. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, I will show you my faith by my works. He now says something here that blessed me. He said there's something called demonic faith. And I'll show you. That. Many in the body of Christ are afflicted with demonic faith. Let me show you. He said, but do you want to know, oh foolish man? And where am I? All right. You believe that there is one God. He said, you do well that you believe. Even the demons believe and tremble. Now, demonic faith is having a faith that you never act upon. So they believe, he said, it's demonic. They believe, but they, don't, they, they tremble, but they will never act on that faith. So there are a lot of people here, oh, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, and then you're going to be sleeping, playing. That's demonic, that's what I'm saying. Demonic faith is not attaching the commensurate work required to what you claim to be your faith. When I was younger, I used to believe everybody believes in the man of God. Now we know the, the difference. We know the difference. He, you can't believe in somebody. You see, when you believe in somebody, there are certain actions that will follow. And at a point in your life, you don't have time for anybody that's not believing in you. You don't have time for that kind of stuff. I mean, you don't have time. The world is too busy. If somebody believes in you, so there are a lot of who claim to believe in the person. They claim to believe in the man of God. But what they believe is not reflected in how they behave. Only a foolish man of God will believe that kind of rubbish. So, if you believe in somebody to show, if you love somebody, there will be certain things to do. If you believe, so he's saying here, even the demons believe, but they don't, they don't act on it. They believe, but they are not going to, they are not going to change their position. <laughs> they believe. Are you there? They acknowledge. If you got, when you remember that particular scripture in Acts chapter 19, when they were dealing with that particular demon, the seven sons of Sceva, they said, Jesus we know. Oh, you know that is Jesus. What did you do? Are you getting what I'm saying here? Oh, you know that is anointed. What did you do? What was your response? What's your practical response to it? Are you there? So that's demonic. Whenever we, we, we claim to know something and we claim to believe something that we don't match up with our works and our action, then it becomes demonic. And it, you see, the same way, he, 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 that kind of faith gets the demon nowhere. That same kind of faith will get you nowhere. It is acting on what you believe and acting on what you know that completes the cycle on the equation of faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? So faith, therefore, will give you something to do. There will be a responsibility to perform, not just sleeping. You see, when you are sleeping like that, you are releasing your faith for poverty. <laughs> are you there? And you sleep like that when you see how someone sleep. I'm not saying you rest, so rest maybe seven hours if you have time, rest and you know. <laughs> but there's a way you sleep that the Bible has attached that kind of sleeping to poverty. So when you are acting on that kind of sleeping, what you're doing is you are releasing your scriptural faith for poverty. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little food around. So is how your poverty comes. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Because scriptures cannot be broken. Scriptures cannot be broken. When you look at that Bible, it can't be broken. Let me press on because of time. So even the ones believe in the tremble. He said, but do you want to know, oh foolish man, eh, that faith without works is dead? He now said, then he begins to now speak about what he calls justification by works. Justification by works. And I'm going to wrap up on this justification by works you see there is a way you work that your faith is justified there's a way you work that makes your faith justified oh i'm going to be rich there's a way you walk there is a way you walk that makes your faith justified look at what he said here he said do you not see he says was not abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son on the altar. So
So he's saying here, when Abraham offered, I'm going to come back to later, when Abraham offered up Isaac, ah, God said, now, in blessing, I'll bless you. Now, in multiplying, are you that he was justified by what he did? Follow me. Was Abraham a father not justified by uh, justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with works and by works was faith made perfect? Aha! I'm going to say that three times. He said, do you see that faith was working together with works and by works faith was made perfect do you see that faith was working together with works and by works was faith made perfect do you see that faith was working together with works and by works was faith made perfect so there's something called perfected faith and it is your works your corresponding actions that bring you to a point of faith perfected faith perfected so works perfect faith works perfect faith hallelujah works perfect faith <laughs> so he said the scripture was now fulfilled which says abraham believed god and he was counted unto him as righteousness And it was counted unto him as righteousness. Let me press on with you. He now says, and he was called the friend of God. You see that? Did you see that? Uh-huh. Let me tell you something here. Friendship must have a price. You get my word? Friendship must have a price. Many of you are suffering from cheap friendships. Friendship is sacrificial. Friendship must have a price. Are you there? It was as, Abra as Abraham sacrificed Isaac that he became a friend of God. So you don't just become a friend of God like that. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying here? There you be said of sacrifice. Remember. And he was called a friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only do you want to be a friend of god there will be works god will demand your isaac friendship will demand sacrifice it's not this i am your friend I'm, no 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 there will be so ah. likewise was not ahab also justified by works you see that again when she received the messengers and sent them on another way he now said, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. What he's saying is any faith that lacks work lacks spirit. Lacks spirit. What he's saying again is that work is the spirit of faith work is the spirit of faith so as we deal with this ladies and gentlemen faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god but faith is perfected by doing the works that's why james one said if any man looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues daring he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work. You see, it's not just that you got know, scripture. Every scripture revealed will give you some work to do. A, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So this means, the ladies and gentlemen, see, 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 see. So what he's saying here, listen to me, is that it takes work. Faith works, not just as a principle, but if you are in faith, there will be practical things to do. Practical things to do. Mm. I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
your eyes will be open to what you have to do in jesus mighty name hallelujah so in dealing with this for the next few minutes i'm just going to begin to run through hebrews 11 some works of faith some some practical works of faith you know hebrews 11 is that scripture where he spoke about the rule of hall of fame or the hall of faith <laughs> but you will see that all of those people that he ascribed faith to they did something 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 it didn't just it was not just ascribed to them they did there was something they did that perfected their faith now so what i want to share with you maybe a few things i'll just run through them very quickly these are things that faith does faith does let's begin from hebrews chapter 1 11 verse 4 let's begin hebrews 11 4, i'm going to rush through it hebrews 11 4 by faith abel offered to god a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous god testifying of his guilt that though it being dead he'd been dead it still speaks so in hebrews 11 verse 7 because we love scriptures hebrews 11 17 by faith abraham when he was tested offered up isaac did you see that who had received the promise he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said in isaac your seed shall be called concluding that god was able to raise him up even from the dead from which he received him also in a figurative sense two things you're seeing here by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice by faith abram offered up isaac so number one faith works of faith number one faith offers a more excellent sacrifice or faith offers more excellent sacrifices so faith listen to me may demand sacrifices the expression of your faith may demand sacrifices the expression of your faith may demand sacrifices the excellence of your may demand sacrifices so faith is not that i'm sitting on my day i'm just come no 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 faith demands sacrifices there are things you will give up for the sake of what you believe are you getting what I'm saying here? Yeah. I, my wife just gave out the best car at her disposal now. A more excellent sacrifice. A more excellent uh, faith offers. So a way we don't say, I have faith, I believe God. You are not sacrificing anything. You are just playing. Faith offers more excellent sacrifices. Faith sometimes demands sacrifices. So if you are not on that frequency, I may question your faith. Number two, because of time. Two, in Hebrews 11, verse 5 to verse 6, I'm just rushing this. Hebrews 11, so it's not that faith is, I believe God. No, it was, it was the sacrifice he offered that proved that he believed God, that made him a friend of God. That's why sincerely, let me not go into that. Anybody, see, the more you sacrifice, the closer we become. As it is, the more you sacrifice, the closer we will become. Sacrifice bets intimacy or friendship. Sacrifice bets. They have been using that. Never sacrifice anything in the in this church, and they want closeness. <laughs> no. F -f -f Let me get out of that. Two. In Hebrews eleven, verse five to verse six, by faith. Enoch was taken away so that he did not see God. That's what happened to him. And he was not found because God had taken him. That's what happened to him. For before he was taken, there was something he did. He had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him works of faith number two are you ready for this faith pleases god by diligently seeking him faith pleases god by diligently seeking him not casually diligently seeking him faith pleases god by so he was caught up yes he was taken but why was he taken 
He diligently sought God as an expression of, are you there? Get one. And then God took him. It's not just that God took him. You can't just say, God will take me. No, why would God take you? He diligently sought God to the point where God was pleased. Then God took him. Are you seeing this thing? You see, many times we claim the B part of scripture, we don't claim the A. So faith diligently seeks God to the point of pleasing him. And then God just takes you. So you see, it's not just that, it's not just that he had faith, I have faith, I was taken. No, 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 no. There is nobody whose translation does not have an explanation. I'll say that once again. There is nobody in the body of Christ whose trans who changed level, whose translation does not have an explanation. It's a lie. Everybody's translation, he was translated. That is not see dead. But that translation, if you get close to them, will have an explanation. If you think it just happens, you are not wise. Everyone's translation in the body of Christ has an explanation. They diligently seek him to the point where he's pleased, and then God moves. So faith again does something. It's not just that it happens, it does something. Number three, in Hebrews 11 verse 7, he said, By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, and prepared an act for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Works of faith number three, faith heeds divine warning. Are you there? Then moves with godly fear, prepared an ark for the salvation of his family. You see three things there? It's not just I have to, no, 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 no. Number one, faith, God warned him. So he heeded that divine warning. Then in heeding that warning, he moved with godly fear. Are you there? And then he built an infrastructure to save his family. So faith builds, faith builds, faith builds. Faith moves. Faith heeds. God warned him. So he heeded the warning, moving with fear, build something for me. God can tell you now, this is the time to build for your family. And you move. God will, I mean, there was one time where we were there and God said, do this fast. Before we know what's happening, something happened. God will be giving you signals. Do this fast or it will be too late. There are structures to build. There are vehicles to build. There are investments to build. There are patterns to build. There are acts to build. If you are heeding the warning of God, you will not always be, let me not go into this area. Faith heed divine warnings. Two, faith moves with godly fear. Faith prepared. Are you there? Eh? To the saving of his family. So it's not just that he had faith. He heeded that warning. He moved with fear. He built the ark. So, so I can, I can, you ask me that, what are you giving for your family? I say nothing. Do you have life insurance? I, I don't have life insurance. You know, a lot of things we do here is just very interesting. Some things we call spirituality. After God has warned you about something, eh? you can't release faith against it all it is sure to happen and that's why when god warns you about something you have to move to counter that reality because there are things god knows is sure to happen in the environment so if you now don't build the infrastructures needed to withstand that particular thing you are gone i was studying somewhere recently and i was studying the cbn in nigeria and they said that in the banks they just raised what they call the uh reserve something ratio the reserve uh, some some reserve ratio or something like that to 35 percent that is they've raised that the bank should have in reserve 35 percent of whatever they are transacting with as a are you there you see sometimes the children of the world are in their generation wiser than the children of life so what is your reserve ratio your ratio is spending everything <laughs> And then later he spends everything he said don't do the pastor what i have is not enough it is not really what you have that matters it's the principle you apply to what you have that matters proverbs 21 20 says if you spend it all you are foolish that's what it says there must be a reserve ratio 
in that reserve ratio, 20% reserve ratio puts Egypt in jail. Some things will happen. It's not, you can't use positive, conf confession, positive confession to change prophetic agenda. It will happen. If God had revealed now that, okay, seven years there's going to be seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. Now, you didn't do anything. Then the famine comes. You will languish. That's what I'm saying. Are you getting what I'm saying? So faith heeds divine warnings. Faith moves with godly fear. Faith prepares an ark to the saving of his family. And by the structure he built from his family, he condemned the world. Are you there? There are many ways you do things right that he condemns everybody else. Let me explain how it works. It is those who do things right that remind others that they are doing things wrong. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how it works. That's why if you are doing things right, get ready. People are not going to like you. They are going to hate you. Because your, your rightness condemns their wrongness. Number four, Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. Are you there? Where am I? Number four, faith obeys what one is called to do and goes out even if he does not know where he's going. Faith obeys. Look at what it says here. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place that he would receive as an inheritance. God can say, you are going to receive this blessing, therefore go there. Are you there? And he went out, not knowing where he was going. So faith obeys what is called to do. Faith obeys, then he goes out, even if you can't. That's why faith sometimes, you don't have all the answers. And I've said this before, you may not know where you are going, but you know the one who told you to go. And when you get there, things will work. Number five, so faith obeys. Faith obeys. Number five also, in Hebrews 11, I said, by faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. So, number five, faith, write it, write it down, dwells in its land of promise, either foreign or local. Faith dwells in its land of promise. So, now, in Genesis 26, verse 2, in Abraham's case, Hebrews 11, 9, God told Abraham to dwell in his land of promise. He had to leave. But in Genesis 26, verse 2 to verse 4, the Lord appeared to Isaac, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I tell you. Are you there? Dwell in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you. For you and your descendants I will give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars. You see, Going is not right. Staying in order. Now, for instance, Abraham's land of promise was a foreign country. Isaac's instruction, are you there, was to dwell in Gerar. So, there are some, for instance, faith is obeying God to dwell in your land of promise. If your land of promise is the UK, go. If your land of promise is Nigeria, stay. Ah, my, my dad blessed me. This last weekend, he was sharing something with the Reverend Gwimini Abora. He said he was praying. Now, when there was no more bread in uh, 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 Bethlehem, Elimelech and his entire family relocated because of the condition of the land. This is that scripture? That's Ruth. They relocated because of the condition of the land. When they got back, they came back empty. That will not be you. I said that will not be you in the name of the Lord Jesus. So you can relocate out of your country and have nothing to show for it. Yet, when Naomi came back, she said, I went out full eh! and I came back empty. That will not be you in the name of the Lord Jesus. That will not be you in the name of the Lord Jesus. There are people who relocate with nothing to show for it. Yet, the land that they relocated from, she came back and met in that land. Are you getting one of me? She came back and met in that land uh, 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 Boaz. Boaz did not relocate from the land and the person who relocated from the land came back and was dependent on the one who did not relocate from the land. This is very powerful. May your going not be the going of uh, Naomi. May you not come back empty. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. So the one who stayed was full. The one who left was empty. Now, the point is not saying go or don't go. What we are saying basically, everybody should find out what God is telling them to do. If God is telling you to jackpa, jackpa. If God is telling you to stay, stay. But don't believe that it is your jackpine that makes it work or your stain. Everybody, it is what God tells you to do that determines how God will be with you. It is definitely not your moving or stain that determines anything. It is when you, whenever you are obeying God to dwell in the land of your promise, either a foreign land or a local land, what matters because you are obeying what God told you to do, he will be with you to prosper you both in that foreign land if he sent you there and in the local land if he didn't, if he told you to stay. Faith dwells. So it's not just that I have faith, no, you dwell in the land. So you see, faith does some things. Let me press on God's time, number six. In Hebrews 11 verse 10, he says, For he waited for the city which had foundations, who is a builder and maker, is God. Number six, faith waits for what is promised. Faith waits for what is promised. Faith waits for what is promised. You know, sometimes, because you are looking for a guy who has foundation, you are looking for a guy whose builder and maker is God, you may, be cho- you may choose to wait. Everybody may be going, may be going, may be getting, may be compromising. But you know what you're waiting on. And sometimes, you see, that's why faith, you see, in the case of Noah, faith required him to move with fear. Is that not all? In the case of Abraham, he waited for that city that had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Glory to God. Number seven, if you don't mind. In Hebrews 11, verse 11, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child, which was past age, because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Number seven, what does faith do? Faith personally receives strength to conceive and judges God faithful to his promises. Did you see that? Faith personally, you can't be depending on your husband's faith. What if your husband is a, is a doubter? What if your husband refuses to take responsibility for his faith? So Sarah herself received strength to conceive, receive strength. Faith is an individual matter. Sarah herself received, you can personally receive strength to conceive. And then faith judged God faithful. So you see that faith, I'm saying one thing in all. All of them that faith was ascribed to, they did something. Not that they just said that I'm hoping, I'm expecting. Number eight, in Hebrews 11, verse 13 to verse 14, he said, this all, then he combines it. He said, this all died in faith. Look at what he said. Having not received the promises. But number one, faith sees it afar off. Two, faith was assured of it. Three, faith embraced it. Four, they now confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. But those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a better, a better country, they seek a new homeland. Hallelujah. So what does faith do? Faith sees it afar off. What does faith do? Faith embraces it. What does faith do? Faith confesses it. What does faith do? Faith declares plainly that they are seeking a better country. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Hebrews 11, verse 15 to verse 17, and truly, he now said, if they have called that mind, called to mind the city from which they had come out from, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country. And that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Faith, write this down, focuses the mind on that better country. Some of you, your memory of the past is too strong. That's why you're not making progress. My first boyfriend. Hmm. Are you going backward or going forward? My first, my first love. So God can't do better than that. He said, if they had been mindful of the country from where they would, they would have had occasion. You see, it is the direction that you fill your mind with that determines where you go. I've said this before. So you're not. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're forward focused. Faith focuses. It's mind on a better country. So to operate in faith, there's what you must focus your mind on. Forgetting those things that are behind. Looking after those. Are you there? Some of you, your, some of you, your past is too strong. Your memory of the past is too strong. 
Unfortunately, if you keep living in the past in your mind, that's how you go. And, and, and I mean, past good, past bad, whatever it is, move. In your, your mistake is your mistake. Move on. Forget those things that are behind. Faith focuses its mind on the country from where it came from. Hallelujah. Number 10. Faith blesses concerning things to come. You see that Hebrews chapter 10, 11, 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob concerning things to come. Hebrews 11, 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the staff. So faith also can bless concerning things to come. You have a baby in your womb, you speak faith over that baby. You have younger children, you speak over that baby. You, have, you speak concerning things to come. You speak concerning next month. You speak concerning next year. You bless concerning, are you there? You bless concerning the remaining 90 days of the year. Days of fulfillment. It's not quiet about things to come. By faith, he blessed concerning things to come. Number 11, Hebrews eleven twenty two. 22. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. Write this down. Number 11, faith gives instructions even about a future they won't partake of. <laughs> he sowed the seed into the children. So, hey, God is going to be faithful to you. When he takes out out of here, bring my bone. He was sowing that seed of faith in the coming generation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number 12. Faith. You see, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because he thought that he was a beautiful child or a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Faith sometimes hides proper things from adverse governmental regulations. I'll talk about that some other time, not today. Faith hides proper things from adverse governmental regulations. Hey, let's obey the government. There's a way out. Are you getting what I'm saying here? There's a way out. There's a way out. I'll go into some other details later. Some of us are not structured to thrive in certain governments. Some of us, this face you are preparing, pre presenting to the world is a face that cannot thrive. So when he saw there was a proper child, are you getting what I'm saying? Fit heed the proper things from governmental regulations. Number 13, faith refuses to be defined by the world. Look at Hebrews, I must do this before I go. Hebrews 11, verse 24 to verse 26. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. Esteeming the reproaches of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, where he looked for the reward. Faith refuses to be defined by the world. Many of you have been defining things by the world. I am phlegmatic. I am this. I don't have temperaments. Any temperament that I am supposed to, any temperament that I need to get my assignment on, that's my temperament. Yesterday, when I was my pastor's church. I was very phlegmatic. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, he's gentle. Yeah, yeah. I was highly phlegmatic in my pastor's church. Gentle, like everything. Lift up your hand, lift your hand. Sit down. I sat down. <laughs> that was my temperament. There. If you look for my trouble, I can tell you I have another temperament. I don't have any temperament. I don't believe in that rubbish. Many of you are allowing all kind of rubbish things to define you. And once, once, you see, once you allow the world defines you, it limits the scope of your evolution. I don't believe in temperament. I don't believe in temperament. What was Jesus when he was scattering? <laughs> what was Jesus Christ when he was scattering the temple? He was choleric. Jesus had different temperaments. Faith by he said he refused to be called. Are you there? He refused to be called for you know, name yourself by all manner of psychological junks. Whatever I need for my work to do as well. Where, where I need to be phlegmatic, I'll be phlegmatic. Where I need to be melancholy, I'll be melancholy. Where I need to be uh, what's that other stuff about? Sanguine. Yeah, I'll be sanguine. Yeah. Like right now, I'm sanguine. I'm talking, talking, talking. When I'm with the I'm sanguine. When I look at the I change. When I'm angry with you, I change again. 
when I'm around those that can injure me in the de by destiny, I'm gentle. I don't have any temperament. By faith, you refuse to be defined by the world. Did they create you? Why should they define you? Number 15. Faith forsakes the world's way of doing things without fearing the consequences. I'm almost done. In Hebrews 11 verse 27. By faith, he forsook his Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Are you getting what I'm saying here? <laughs> faith forsakes the world's way of doing things because you are seeing something else. If you don't do it, you'll be compromising. You'll be not kind of rubbish. Faith, he forsook Egypt, the world's way. Egypt speaks about what? He forsook the world's way of doing things. And he wasn't afraid of the wrath of the king. Are you getting what I'm saying? For he endured as one who was seen the invisible. When you're seeing God, you can, you can, what, 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 what is all that stuff? Forsake the world, we are doing things. Number 16, faith keeps divine ordinances. Hebrews 11 verse 28, by faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. So faith keeps divine ordinances. It could be Passover. It could be the sprinkling of blood. Whatever is prescribed in the world to save your family. Faith operates in it. Eventually, those who didn't keep the same ordinance, faith may tight. Are you getting what I'm saying? Lest the one who destroyed the world touch them. Some have given up on tithing as we speak right now. Number 17, in Hebrews 11, 29 to 30, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith, they overcame. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had encircled it for seven days. Faith obeys divine instructions. Obey. Watch this. In the first case, why didn't they drown? God told them to do it. How did the wall fall down? Imagine they went, went around uh, ridiculous instruction. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So they're going around, round and round, round and round. Why are you going around and round? He said, and keep quiet. Are you? What are the guys? I can imagine mocking them. What are these ones just going around, going around. As God. But faith obeys ridiculous divine instructions. The results are always there to show. Lastly, faith receives the people of God with peace. You see that scripture, Hebrews 11, 31. By faith, Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. When she had received the spies, James said, and sent them another way. So, faith, are you there? Received God's messengers, received God's people, protected them, sent them another way, and because of what she did, she did not perish. As we round up tonight, he said, oh, what more shall I now say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith, what did they do? Subdued kingdoms. They walked righteousness. I didn't say they believed righteousness. They walked it out. They walked righteousness. They obtained divine promises. They stopped the mouth of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, no matter how weak, they were made strong. They became valiant in battle. They turned to fight the armies of alien. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. Still, others are trials of mocking, of scourgings. Yes, and of chains, and of imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sown in two. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worth. They wandered around in deserts and the mountains, in dens and in caves of the earth. All this having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect without us. I rest my case. What I'm saying in essence, faith does something. Faith works. I'm not uh, so they didn't just, faith was not just ascribed to them for doing nothing. Faith works. Faith does something. So what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to begin to seek, not only for the evidence, but for the substance for everything we believe. 
and let's begin to walk in those particular realities. Faith without works is dead. Being alone. I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, grace to do the work that your faith demands, let it rest upon you right now. In the name of faith, will always give you a responsibility. Faith to take grace, to take responsibility for the faith. Your faith to become perfected. Let it rest upon you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, if there be any sickness in that body, I command it to be healed now. In the name of Jesus, if there be any yoke, touch that part of your body, I command it to be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, if there be a curse, let that curse be broken right now. Stand up where you are now. Don't be looking. Yeah, do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the anointing rest upon you now, destroying every yoke, removing every burden. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let grace also rest upon you to do your part. Listen to me. God is too faithful. If you do your part, God is sure to do his part. All we're saying is that faith doesn't just work as a principle. Faith works. There will be things to do. There will be things to do. Now I pray that your hands will not be slack. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to pray if you're there saying, Pastor, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take it to the next step. We want to reconcile with our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me. He said, I believe there is God. That's demonic. Say, I believe there is God. That's you know, everybody believes there is God. But do you act on that faith? Do you confess? Do you live for him? Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you live for him? And somebody saying, Pastor, I'm tired of my life, I'm tired of my sins. I need to reconcile with my maker. You're saying, Pastor, will you pray for me tonight? If that is you, gently say this to me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Therefore, right now, I am saved. And I receive the deposit of faith into my heart from this day henceforth. In Jesus' name, amen.